Morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Oh my God, it's almost the weekend. We're almost there. One more day. But have no fear because we have an amazing episode of the Daily Language Diary today. We're going to be discussing one of my all-time favorite techniques that I use for all my languages to achieve fluency and especially to really hone those skills and achieve a high level of fluency. But first, let's take just three seconds. Cheers to you and me, all of us. Happy language learning. Happy Friday. Really, really quickly, I want to give you a couple updates. First of all, uh, I know that on day eight, when we discussed how languages have helped me live and work in nine countries, I spoke in Japanese, in French, in Brazil and Portuguese, just kind of on the fly. And a lot of you really liked that and said you'd like me to speak in all kinds of different languages in a lot of these videos. So I just want to say that as I'm doing these every single day, I am getting faster. And so these videos are going to start coming out earlier in the morning and I will also have more time for editing and so I will begin speaking lots of different languages in these videos just need a little bit more time. Secondly, my furniture is finally <laughs> arriving after two, almost two and a half months being stuck in an empty apartment because all my furniture got stuck once the city was locked down. A lot of it's coming on Sunday so these videos are going to become a lot more fun to watch because I can have all these different scenes, it's going to be so cool. And the final really exciting update is that because I have these daily videos coming out now and because I'm doing so many videos and I'm practicing a lot you've probably noticed a lot of my little coffee montages and improving the lighting and all kinds of stuff I'm actually gonna go back to creating short documentary style videos that will come out in addition to these daily videos they'll just be a lot less frequent so you can expect sort of like 10 to 15 minutes maybe even 20 minutes sometimes really beautiful short documentary style videos that really tell a story end to end about a particular language learning topic. So I'm really excited for those and I'll keep you updated when the first one will be coming out. On to the daily question. Ricardo Arriaga writes in and says, Robin, I think it would be cool to explain again the method you once used with the Easy Language YouTube channel to improve your speaking skills on that foreign language. So I'm really glad that Ricardo asked this question. I have been dying to sort of remake that video. He's referencing a video that I made several years ago about how to go from low to highly advanced in a foreign language. Now in that video, I sort of demonstrated in Italian. By the way, there are subtitles in the YouTube player of that video if you wanna watch it. But I demonstrated in Italian um, the method that I would use to go from low advanced to really highly advanced. This is a method I've used in many languages. I've used it with tons of students. And I really love this method because it's very full bodied. It improves your listening skills, your reading and writing skills. It improves your speaking skills. It takes advantage of dead time as well as dedicated study time. It's really a full bodied approach and it's it works so well. So essentially what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be taking content that we really like. And this is gonna be content where we have bilingual subtitles so it's a little tricky to find but I'm gonna give you some resources and what we essentially do is we have several phases I often talk about consolidation and how important this is to my personal process for learning languages where it's not just about pouring stuff in and learning lots of new words I like to actually really mine that content for all of its value. And I like to go back and actually consolidate that knowledge and almost funnel it through down into my long-term memory. So I'll walk you through the process. The first thing you'll need, like I said, is some content that preferably has bilingual subtitles or a transcript. Now, as Ricardo mentioned in his question, in the previous video I did about this, I specifically focused on the Easy Languages YouTube channel. And I still recommend that. It's a wonderful resource because they not only have videos that have bilingual subtitles. So I did this method most famously with German. That's where I did this for a long time. I have a memorized deck with like seven or 800 words and phrases in it across like 13 episodes, but they have an unbelievable selection of languages. They all have different amounts of content, but I like recommending easy languages because there's a good chance they will have some videos in a language that you're learning. But again, just to be clear, you can do this method with any content as long as you have a transcript and preferably even sort of bilingual subtitles so you can really be sure of what's being said. The other reason why easy languages is a great option is that preferably you wanna be able to have some kind of audio that you can take with you. 
And lastly, the Easy Languages episodes are pretty short. They're like 10 minutes, some of them are six minutes, some maybe are 12 minutes, but they're fairly sort of bite-sized and they're easily digestible. However, I have done this exact same technique with a French podcast I mentioned recently called Chemin d'Ecrivain. I'm gonna talk more about that in a different episode, but those are like 10 minutes long. I transcribed them myself. And then I got some help from a friend of mine who could help me sort of correct the transcription. But so what I do is I go to like Easy Languages. Now, some of them like Easy German has a dedicated YouTube channel, but most languages are on the Easy Languages YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description so you can find it easily. But what I do is I go through the list of available episodes. And the first thing is to just pick maybe like three to five, maybe even 10 episodes that look particularly interesting to you. Because one of the core concepts here is that we're taking content that we're genuinely interested in, that genuinely excites us, and that we really genuinely want to listen to. Step one, watch it. Watch the episode and just see how much you can understand. Again, it's 10 to 12 minutes usually. It's just a nice way to kind of get a gauge and see where you're at. And it could be fun to kind of test yourself. Enjoy being able to understand even just a few words here and there. Enjoy and celebrate every time you're able to understand like a sentence or a phrase. But once you're done, sort of take a mental note of how easy or how difficult that was. See if you're able to summarize what was the main point. But after that is when the real magic begins. Step two, is that you're gonna need to go back through and take copious notes on that episode. Now, when I take notes in this method, I actually very rarely write down individual words. Most of the time, I have at the very least a word and like a preposition or something, but very often as a part of a phrase, or I even sometimes have entire phrases. Because what you're trying to do here is you're trying to really become sensitive and aware of how words fit together, how the language composes ideas and sentences. You wanna really start to sort of hone your ability to not just learn words in a vacuum, but you wanna learn which words go together, what are collocations that exist. And another important point is that you're not just writing down new stuff. So a lot of what I write down in my notes, there are things that I actually understood when I watched the video, but I would not have known how to say it that way. So very often I'll be watching a video and I'm like, ooh, I like that. I like the way that she said that. That was a really nice turn of phrase. Or like, ooh, I really like that combination of words. I write everything down. So that's why I say you're writing really copious notes. You're writing really detailed notes. You're mining that content for every little piece of value that you can get and you're putting it onto a piece of paper. Step three is you're gonna take all that content, all that beautiful value that you just extracted, and you're gonna put it into some kind of space-time repetition software. I used to use Anki a lot in the past, then I used Memorize for a long time. I think there are more and more of these things out there. You just need some kind of way to study and kind of flashcard all this content that you've got. Now, an important note here, you might think, well, this is a bit repetitive because I just wrote down everything, and then now I'm gonna go back again and put this stuff. But this is actually really helpful because what you'll find is just the process of writing down this stuff and then sort of moving it into some kind of flashcarding software you get like two rounds of review but you also have this there's this sort of discovery feeling when you're first mining the content you're writing it by hand which really has a nice impact on your cognitive process and then putting it into a flashcarding software is kind of a nice way to quickly review and refresh everything so by the time you actually go to study which is step four Four, you've already seen the words quite a few times. So uh, the next step is to just basically go through and study all those words and phrases and everything you got from that episode. Now, step five is where things really start to get magical. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna need to find a way to sort of rip the audio. If it's a podcast, that's great because you already have the audio. But to be honest, I think nowadays it's also pretty feasible for a lot of people to just play a YouTube video while you're walking around and just listen to the audio. But what you need to do is create some kind of a playlist. And so step five is great because you can do it in your dead time. You could do it while you're ironing or taking a walk or washing the dishes and you're gonna just listen back to the episode that you just studied. But what happens is you get into this really amazing cycle where 
eventually you'll have about four or five or six episodes that you've already studied. And so whenever you do anything that's like dead time and you can listen, you basically just shuffle. You shuffle and go to a random episode and you listen to it again. And the point is that through doing this, you are going to become an absolute master of that piece of content. You're gonna start to know every single word, phrase, idiom. You're gonna be fine tuning your ears to hear all of the teeny tiny nuances, all the filler words, all the, the, the mumbling. You create for yourself probably your first opportunity to understand native speakers talking and you understand it almost perfectly. And because of the amount of repetition and the fact that you're not just studying words in a vacuum, but you're actually studying complete phrases sometimes, you will find that these things become a part of your active repertoire in the language. And so when you go to speak, what I always find is that whenever I come across a scenario where a phrase from this method really fits perfectly, I'm very able to just express myself and I and I, I know that it's a really natural way to express myself in that scenario because I've pulled it from real authentic context. So you get into this really, really nice cycle because basically when you have dead time, when you have some time that you could listen to something, you have this nice selection of stuff. You can just shuffle and understand almost everything, but really be practicing and honing in your knowledge and you're remembering everything. You could even do shadowing. So shadowing becomes very viable. Once you've really gotten down a piece of content, you could shadow it and then you're really improving your ability to speak. And we can talk about shadowing more in a different episode. But then in your dedicated study time, it's great. You can either study your flashcards and keep reviewing and reinforcing all these like beautiful, awesome phrases that you've learned and mined from this content. Or of course, you can be adding another episode. I have to tell you, this might sound like a lot of work and it might sound like it gets repetitive, but I really love this. I remember with German, I found an episode about the, the fall of the Berlin Wall. It was so cool. I learned a lot of things I didn't know about the Berlin Wall and it made me really interested and I found myself going on to look at documentaries in German uh, because I got interested in this topic. And again, the satisfaction of being able to go out on a walk, look at my German playlist and just shuffle it and have the variety of 12 or 15 different episodes and to just be able to understand it and then to find myself in a conversation and find myself able to just pull words out of this and just use them in context and for people to say, wow, that was really natural. Like, I'm surprised you know that phrase. I'm surprised you, you know these words. It's just great. So I really recommend this if you're looking to really boost your fluency, boost your ability to speak more naturally, to expand your vocabulary. It's amazing for improving your listening comprehension. It's just a really good all around method. And so I think you're gonna love it. And feel free to check out that other video if you wanna see me demonstrating with Italian. And thank you again, Ricardo, for the question. Everybody have an amazing Friday. I'll see you back here tomorrow. It's gonna to be the weekend and we'll have another great daily question.